What the world needs now is people. People who see healthcare a little bit differently. Where technology helps doctors provide more precise care, leading to faster, better outcomes. And puts improved health in all of our hands. Because seeing a healthier world isn't far in the future. We're building it now. GE, building a world that works. Sonography of calculi and calcifications of the urinary tract. Part 1 will cover the kidney. A bright spot in the kidney can be in the parenchyma, can be in the cortex medulla or in the collecting system. Medullary nephrocalcinosis is bunch of calcifications in the renal medulla. In most of the pyramids you see bunches of calcification. Uh, the size of calcification may vary because it is large here as seen here and medullary nephrocalcinosis may be due to renal tubular acidosis, medullary sponge kidney or hyperparathyroidism. So here you see uh, the size of the bunches of calcification are less compared to the previous and much less here. You see the renal pyramids is enlarged and echogenic with tiny spots and when you use high frequency you see the actual tiny specks of calcifications. So, so this is uh, medullary nephrocalcinosis least uh, uh, grade and uh, can also be in renal tubular acidosis the calcifications may not be seen but the renal uh, pyramids are enlarged and echogenic as a precursor and um, later on it will develop medullary nephrocalcinosis. So renal tubular acidosis is kidney's inability to excrete enough acid or retain enough bicarbonate with a normal renal function resulting in a clinical syndrome characterized by metabolic acidosis. On ultrasound we see enlarged echogenic pyramids with or without medullary nephrocalcinosis. It is an autosomal dominant and recessive types are there. Then another condition is transient acute tubular dysfunction in the newborn. So when you happen to do scan on the newborn, you see the renal, the tips of the renal pyramids echogenic. So here these are otherwise normal neonates. This condition is seen about 4 to 5, 58 percent of uh, neonates. You see as maximal hyperechogenicity seen at the apex of the pyramids or papilla as seen here. So that is the uh, pyramid, renal pyramid and at the apex you see this echogenicities and uh, extend with progressively decreasing echogenicity up to approximately halfway up the pyramid. So from brightly echogenic tip of the pyramid and then decreasing towards seen up to the halfway up to the pyramid. The cause is not known, it returns to normal echo pattern in a few days. Then we come to autosomal recessive polycystic disease which can also uh, show bright spots in the pyramids. This is a condition where there is variable degree of tubular dilatation cyst formation with hyperechoic foci of crystal deposition in the medullary pyramids. Only in some cases we see the hyperechogenic foci. So they are seen as punctate hyperechoic foci 1 to 3 millimeter in size and often casting a ring down artifact. And um, this condition of autosomal recessive polycystic kidney in some patients we see this what looks like calcifications but they are not calcifications that is the indices with ring down artifacts. This condition always accompanied by periportal hepatic fibrosis so when you see the liver you see the heterogeneous echo pattern of hepatic fibrosis. So some other cases, examples of autosomal recessive polycystic disease which shows um, punctate uh, hyperechoic foci in the enlarged echogenic pyramids and um, uh, with high frequency you see the uh, tiny cysts, you see the enlarged pyramid, here it appears echogenic but when you use high frequency you see the tiny cysts and you see the hyperechoic foci with ring down artifacts, you see the ring down artifacts. So that is typical autosomal recessive 
polycystic disease. Another example, you see the conventional probe, you see enlarged echogenic and uh, cystic areas in the pyramids with hyperechoic focus. With high frequency, you see the enlarged pyramid, you see the tiny cysts, and you also see the hyperechoic focus with the ring down artifacts, very classical. Then we come to the renal calculi. Renal calculi or calcifications within the collecting system, they are seen as echogenic lesion in the central echogenic area because the collecting system is in the central echogenic area of varying size and uh, with an acoustic shadow deep to the, the echogenic lesion and uh, there may be dilated collecting system due to obstruction. The acoustic shadow depends on the size of the calculus and the type of calculus. Some calculus like phosphate may not attenuate ultrasound so the shadow may be less. So when the calculus is small, is seen as a small spot and the shadow may not be obvious. In that case, you can put a color doppler to look for the twinkle artifact, which will help to say that it is a calculus and not due to an artifact or other conditions. Now, renal calculi, they present clinically. The etiology is unknown, maybe multifactorial. The pelvic lysal system, if it is non-obstructive, patients are asymptomatic or they can present as hematuria when it obstructs the collecting system it can produce as um, pain either in the flank or the typical uretric colic with or without uh, a fever and chills due to infection and most of the calculi the uh, site of obstruction 80 percent is at the uretrovesical junction the dilated collecting system due to calculus may be focal calyctasis as seen here due to the calculus in the minor calyx producing minor calyctasis or the focal calyctasis may be a major calyx because of the calculus in the infundibulum or in the pelvis obstructing only that major calyx or it can be renal pelvic calculus obstructing all the calyces so results in dilatation of all the calyces or maybe the calculus is at the pelvic uretric junction obstructing with the dilated calyces as well as pelvis or it may be in the ureter which produces hydroureteronephrosis. So, the dilatation may be vary. As a complication of obstruction due to calculus, there may be infection result in pyonephrosis, uh, which we saw in the urinary tract infection, the dilated calyces and pelvis due to upper ureteric calculus, that is hydronephrosis. And within the dilated collecting system, you see internal echoes debris indicating infection. And um, the renal calculus, patient may be asymptomatic and um, it may result in silent atrophy of the kidney as seen here. The size itself is um, become very reduced, parenchymal thinning and you see a large staghorn calculus filling the kidney and patient is asymptomatic all this time. You see the shadow also. So staghorn calculus, thin parenchyma and smaller kidney. Now in the newborn, you may see a calculus in the collecting system like this. And uh, in children being treated for some reason with frusamide may form calculi, with small calculi and it is transient with the withdrawal of the frusamide, they disappear. The renal calculi may be due to stasis as seen here. There is um, congenital PUG obstruction with uh, hydronephrosis and there is calculus formation in the calyx or in the pelvis and it will be mobile. That is due to stasis. Now, renal calculi, the mimickers or the differential diagnosis may be gas, arterial calcification or cas calcified sloughed papilla, ureteric stent, Randall's block or cyst with milk of calcium. Now, calculus versus gas, you see in the gas, you see get the ring down artifact, but whereas the calculus, you get the acoustic shadow. So that is one of the uh, difference, but sometimes it may not be obvious. You see here multiple bright spots in the calyces and uh, there looks like there is some dirty shadow. Uh, so we cannot say whether it is calculus or gas. So in that case, you can take advantage of um, the shifting of the gas by changing the position of the patient. Now here, this is the axial scan with the patient's supine. So the gas is in the calyces as shown here. And when you change the patient position of the patient to left lateral decubitus, so the gas will move to 
or the non-dependent part. So here the non-dependent part in lateral decubitus is the renal pelvis. So the gases move to the renal pelvis. You have to understand the orientation of the image. Here that is the patient lying supine and we do an axial scan from the flank. So the image will look like this. So the gas is in the non-dependent calyces here. So here because we are doing scan from the flank that is the kidney of the image and the gas is in the calyces because that is the non-dependent part. So when you change the position from axial scan supine, gas is in the non-dependent uh, anterior calyces. So that will be the appearance of the image. So okay, in the gas in the non-dependent anterior calyces. So when you put the patient in left lateral decubitus, you see the non-dependent part is the renal pelvis of the left kidney. So previously the gas was here because uh, change the position the gas moves to the non-dependent part that is the pelvis so because we do the scan from here it will look uh, the image will look up here and the gas will be in the renal pelvis like that so that is the kidney from the calyces it has moved to the pelvis confirming that it is gas and it is not calculus now calculus is mimicked by calcified renal artery as seen here that is the uh, bright spots in the as if uh, calculating the calyces but um, the uh, spitting fag factors are the age of the patient. So calcified arteries will be seen in old age and the branching appearance will differentiate it. Of course, you can take an x-ray and you see the typical branching pattern of the arterial calcification. Another clue will be you can use a different axis. So here you see coronal scan. In axial scan, you see the extension of the calcification as an artery, linear that rules out calculus. You can put color doppler and within the calcification you will see flow. And another uh, differentiating point will be adjacent main renal artery may be calcified or other arteries like superior mesenteric artery you may see calcification confirming that it is not calculus and it is calcified artery. It may be the echogenic spot may be due to stent. You see here there is the kidney and you see the echogenic spot with shadowing mimicking a calculus but you see the stent in the renal pelvis of course the history patient may tell that uh, the stent has been placed long time back so our patient may not remember that uh, whether it was removed or not so patient would have forgotten when it remains for a long time then concretions form on the stent that is also will be seen as calculus but here it is the stent itself which is seen mimicking a calculus. Now calculus versus calcified necros papilla the differentiating point is the ring like calcification because it is the slough papilla on the surface the calcification forms so it appears ring like and um, the history of diabetes uncontrolled will be there and the patient will have impaired renal function because it's bilateral disease. Another case of uh, you see the ring calcification in the region of medulla and a very obvious case of ring calcification in the region of medulla. So that uh, differentiates it from the calculus. Now Randall's plug is a echogenic lesion in the central echogenic area. There is no acoustic shadowing because it is uh, mild calcification and uh, small in size and it is seen at the tip of the papilla typically. It is a precursor for renal calculus but it is seen at the tip of the papilla on mobile and uh, you can use high frequency and you see the medullary pyramid and at the tip you see the typical Randall's plug. So this should not be mistaken for a calculus that is the normal pyramid and the papilla. So Randall's plug versus calculus you can see multiple uh, bright spots in the kidney and uh, when there is no dilatation of the calyces it is difficult to appreciate but when there is dilatation of the calyces that gives a contrast and you see the calcifications at the tip of the papilla very nicely seen. Calculus is uh, versus cyst of, uh, with milk of calcium. So here you see a coronal scan. There is um, uh, echogenic uh, uh, lesion with uh, shadowing. And uh, when you do a transfer scan, you see that uh, there is actually in supine there is a cyst. And within that you see a echogenic level indicating that it is milk of calcium. You can confirm by changing the position of the patient. So here it is axial scan in 
left lateral decubitus. So the milk of calcium shifts its level according to the position of the patient confirming that it is cyst with milk of calcium. So this is a large cyst with uh, milk of calcium well seen uh, with the conventional probe itself. To explain the occurrence, we will see the uh, schematic diagram. So that is the supine position that is the right kidney and you see a cyst with milk of calcium in the posterior parenchyma and when you shift the patient to left lateral decubitus then you will see when you scan from here you see the image orientation it will be like this with the shadow will be corresponding because the beam comes like that so that is why you see the milk of calcium and the shadow with change of position you see the left lateral decubitus position right kidney is up so the the milk of calcium shifts to the dependent part and uh, so uh, when you scan from the flank the appearance will be like this with the shadow and uh, so you see the shift of the milk of calcium with the, because the probe beam comes like that you get the shadow corresponding so that is cyst with milk of calcium now this is uh, an example of a 45 year old man pain left loin and uh, this is the plain x-ray and uh, you see the ivp it is not connected to the calyx there is a calcification and that is the CT scan done after the IVP reported as calcified mass. But when you see an ultrasound, you see a peripheral calcification with a cyst in the center. So when you do a transverse scan, you see that the, the cyst and there, are, there is formation of a level and uh, you see the transverse scan and uh, with supine and when you do right lateral decubitus, you see that the shift of all the milk of calcium with the change of position confirming that it is not a calcified mass it is actually cyst with milk of calcium which is brought on so well with ultrasound and uh, which is not diagnosed with CT scan. Now smaller the cysts it is uh, difficult now here it looks like a parenchymal calcification but when you do a transverse scan you see the tiny cyst with the fluid uh, echogenic level and with the shift of position of the patient you see the level shifts confirming that it is cyst with milk of calcium even further uh, smaller cysts with milk of calcium will look like just bright spots but the differentiating point will be the ring down artifacts which goes with the cyst with milk of calcium now here uh, again um, there is a cyst there is uh, an echogenic spot so whether it is cyst with milk of calcium or a cyst with adjacent calculus now to differentiate you see the cyst that is the calcification in axial scan supine whereas in axial scan in prone also the picture does not change if it is milk of calcium it should come to the opposite uh, wall where it is not shifted indicating that it is cyst with um, a calculus in the adjacent calyx now calculus versus parenchymal calcification now here you see uh, echogenic spot in the well in within the parenchyma so it is not in the central echogenic area to say that it is calculus in the uh, calyx so well within the parenchyma so parenchymal calcification can be seen like that and uh, here you see multiple coalescent uh, granulomas echo poor granulomas and in the granulomas you see small punctate calcifications this is typical appearance of uh, tuberculosis one of the appearances of tuberculosis these um, uh, calcifications coalesce without treatment to form a coalescent amorphous a mass of calcification and typically there is a superficial parenchymal scar so this appearance is um, a sequelae of tuberculosis now arcuate arteries uh, may appear bright particularly in uh, old age so that should not be mistaken for calculus you see the bright spots and typical location helps us to differentiate it is at the cortico medullary junction between the cortex and medulla that is the typical location of arcuate arteries so that, that will differentiate it from calculi we may face uh, some difficulties with renal calculi now here this is coronal scan of the kidney the kidney looks normal there is no calculus seen but when you do a uh, transfer scan you see the kidney looks normal but you see a calculus medial to the kidney this is actually an extra renal pelvis which is not distended so within that extra renal pelvis there is a calculus it looks as though it is an extra renal 
calcification but it is actually a calculus in the extra renal pelvis and some uh, findings may be masked by the shadowing due to calculus here you see uh, the kidney you see a large calculus and there is shadowing so if you tilt the probe you see the renal pelvis and there is another calculus in the renal pelvis which was masked in this section by the shadow of this calculus so you have to be careful you have to that is why we have to make a sweep of the entire volume of the kidney to avoid such mistakes now here you see a kidney coronal scan you see a large calculus with a focal diacalectasis and dead then shadowing so something finding in this part of the renal parenchyma will be masked by the shadow so that is what has happened there is a large calculus shadow masks a mass in the uh, medial parenchyma which is uh, revealed on a ct scan coronal section so this is a disadvantage with ultrasound of course a transverse scan and a sweep may bring it out better but here in this case it was missed thank you for your patient listening